Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm your host, Richard Morla. In today's video, I want to introduce to you the whole series that I'm doing for total beginner in Photoshop, assuming you know nothing about Photoshop and you want to have the fundamentals that it will take you all the way from zero to intermediate advanced. I don't want to lie to you and tell you that you're going to go from zero to hero. But if you stick with me on this series that I'm going to be releasing every week, I can assure you that you will go all the way from beginner to intermediate in no time. That being said, let's get started. So here we are in my creative cloud desktop. All right, as you can see, I just open and here I have all my applications. And let's say I'm going to open Photoshop because of course we want to learn Photoshop. So I open Photoshop here. And again, assuming that you have no clue, you have never opened Photoshop, or maybe you do have some knowledge, but you want to work on those fundamentals. Why? Because fundamentals are very essential, you know, because without a good base, a good background, you definitely cannot have a good solid building. So, and this is what you're going to be confronting here. Like all these here are the images I've been working on through time, but you're going to have this empty if it's the first time you open Photoshop. And if not, of course, you can see here everything that you've been working on. And this is the home tab right here where I am, as you can see it right here. So as I move in each one of these choices, I will have different options displayed around here. For instance, if I go to learn, then the Adobe Cloud, for those who have Adobe Cloud or just paying Photoshop alone, you will find Adobe own tutorials in this here. Most of them are two minutes long, no more three to five, and they are very simple, very basics. Then here, if you go to your work, which is my work here, at this point, uh, you won't be able to see it. But if I go here to Lightroom Photos, which is the other one. So assuming that you paint the photographer plan for Adobe Cloud, or you have um, Lightroom and also Photoshop, anything that you do in Lightroom Mobile, you will be having access right here, as you can see. This, for example, were recently taken. Also, I can go to albums and I can see here, see more. And if I click see more, I will see all the images that I have taken in my phone and exported it to Lightroom Mobile. Now here, if I go to cloud document, this is very interesting. Why? Because here you can create folders, name it, and then you can save your work that you're working on and save it right here. Why this is a good option? Because maybe you don't have enough space in your computer. Not having enough space, Adobe Cloud give you the option for you to save those files in their cloud. So you don't need to have a storage in your computer. Meaning that, for instance, if you need to travel and log in in a different computer, you will, once you log in, you will have access to all your documents because they storage in the cloud. So moving on here, this is very um, good here because if you click here, you see this, this is the folder and these here are the way this is gonna be displayed. Right now you can see it as a thumbnail, but if I click here, now you can see it as folder. If I click ba um, back here or no folder, but I will say list. Um, yeah, list, no folder, but the list. So, and then here you can see um, you have it as folder or thumbnails. Then here you have deleted, which is all the deleted file that you have deleted. If you don't like it or whatever, you work on those and you just delete it. So you can see here that these files are files that I have recently deleted. And when, when you haven't deleted, you can recover them. Like if I click here, uh, any of this file, obviously I will recover them back. That's up to you. 
then uh, we have create new and open. If I say create new, Photoshop will confront me with this panel here. And on this panel here, I have the photo section where if I'm going to work in image, let's say you have it here, the size, you have seven by five, 300 DPI. If you're gonna work on the landscape, if you're gonna work in different sizes of the landscape. So this is very good for people who actually work doing compositing or image compositing or they are painting. So it's very good because you already have there a template. All right, so now here you have print. So here you can see letter, legal, tabloid, A4, and then you have here art illustration, which is also ways for those who work in art and illustration. So you have predefined templates there that it can be very useful for you if that is what you want to work on. Let's say you're working with Adobe Illustrator and now you want to learn some new skills in Photoshop. Well, here you are. Then you have web for um, web designer. You have mobile. And this is very good because normally, let's say you want to create a template, a story or something or a thumbnail. And you know that it's gonna go for, let's say Instagram, Snapchat or Twitter. So here is the way where you wanna go. And then finally you have here film and video. And film and video will give you the 1920 by 1080, and also you have here 12 by 720, 14 by 1080, and so on and so forth. But also here in this area, you can make the name of whatever, let's say, yeah, let's go away like that, whatever. And then, <laughs> yeah, whatever. And then here you have the width and the height, so you can, change this parameter here. And obviously you can do that with each one here. And then here you can choose pixel, inches, centimeter, millimeters, depending on what you're working on. If you're working with visuals and videos and photography, you might wanna choose pixel. Then again, here you have your resolution. Then you have your color mode here. You have your beats here, 8 bits, 16 bit, 30 bit. 8-bit is the lower quality, 16-bit is good quality, 32-bit is definitely the maximum quality. Then here your color space like bitmap, grayscale, RGB, CMYK, and also lab color. And if it's too complicated all this for you, very simple, just pick one template, leave it as a default and just go for it. And then this is, for instance, what you will see when you create that template. See, and for any template that you will pick, this is exactly how you will see it. You will have the grip here. You will have all your um, panels and everything, etc. So let's close it because we still don't want to go there because we still have one more option, uh, which is open. If I click open here, now I have the option to go and export the file that I am um, actually want to work. For instance, if I go here, uh, let's open one of these image, uh, selection, healing brush tool, content aware, and now I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna open this image right here. And this is how you import your files to Photoshop. All right, now that we have that here, so let's start here. What do you have once you have your file open in Photoshop? Well, here, first of all, what you can see here, this is your image and it's represented on this tab right here. If I close this, so the image will disappear and we will go back to the place where we were before, all right? So now that we know that, that this is our image here and this here, you can move around. Like if you move it like that, don't get panic, don't get crazy, don't get scared. It's very simple. You just grab this here like this and then you drag it back until you see the blue line right in there, as you saw there. See, let me do it again. Look, I see the blue right here coming in this area. I release and now it's inside. Now, what do we have here is on your top, this is your toolbar, as you can see here. Why this is your toolbar? I prefer to call this like your uh, option bar. 
rather than your toolbar. Let's call it like that, option bar. It sounds better to me like that. Right here, you have files, edit, image, layer, type, select, filter, 3D, view, window, and help. And as I said, this is gonna be a series here. I hope that you stick with me here because I'm gonna go in depth on each one of those menu. But for the moment, we're gonna have a brief overview. So if I go here to file, in file you have new. If I hit new here, check that each one of these here, some of them have shortcuts. So if I click new, I will be confronted with the page that I already explained to you, assuming that you want to bring either an image, a print or something, or just to create a new empty blank uh, layer or file. So then here we have open. If I click open, basically I'm going to import an image. Let's do that. Let's bring um, another image. If I click this image right here and I open, now you can see that I have a different file open on a different tab. So now that you know that, we continue with file. So we have open as, smart object, recent, so these are the recent file that you worked on. And then you have other choices here. But one of the most important choices that you have here is save open as and open your project and save as because this, trust me, you want to save your file. All right. So then we have moving on. Then we have here, what is your toolbar? As you can see here, this is your toolbar and you have all the tools that you're going to use to work on your images. Right here, this is your toolbar, once again, where you have all the tools to work on your images. And that goes for your brushes. As you can see, this goes with your selection tools. This go also with more creative one. And this goes with your eraser tool where you can erase uh, things from your image and so on and so forth. And also here you have your color pickers. For instance, if I choose the brush and then I click here and I pick red, now I can paint red on my image because this is your color picker. Now, if you control C, now that disappear. So as you can see here, I say, once again, this is your toolbar. So, and here, what you can see here is your property toolbar. For example, if I pick this tool here, which is my brush tool, I have property here that I can change. For example, I can change the flow, which is the intensity in which my brush will paint. If I increase this to 100%, you can see that now this is more abrupt. And opacity, which also do the same as flow. Then you have a smoothing, let's say you are painting and you want to trace a difficult line, but you want to have it smooth. For instance, let's make our brush smaller. Now you can see that I can, I'm going actually fast here, but you can see how this is go because this is the way a smoothing work. A difference that if I put this to zero and I do this, you can see now that I have less of the control that I'm working on. Let me make a new layer here. Let's call it like that with my own written word, new layer. So, all right. So here, once again, this is your property tool panner. This is your toolbar here, and this is your property. Remember, property toolbar. If I choose, for example, this much tool, I have choices here, the healing brush tool, and so on. And once again, remember, as I said, I'm going to go in depth with the tools, the menu and everything. This is just a brief overview in Photoshop, assuming that you have no knowledge at all or that you do have some, but there are things that you don't know where they are. So I'm trying to help you right there. So again here, so we were on the file option. We, I was explaining the toolbar and the, the tool, <laughs> I can't say that, <laughs> toolbar and the property toolbar. So now if we continue to edit, remember here, this is your option bar here. Now edit, you have choices here, such as copy, cut, stroke, and some creative uh, 
ways that you can use once you know uh, a little bit more that we will be teaching in the other episodes. Then you have image here and you have your mode here, which basically is like which color mode you wanna work, 8-bit, 16-bit, and so on and so forth. And here you can also use creative way to work on your image. Then the layer, and this layer here will affect every single layer, everything, every single thing that you have here working on that layer. For example, this layer is selected. If I go here to layer, now you can see here, I have many choices that I can apply to that layer. Then we have type, which is related to everything I, the number, as the name says, typing. <laughs> then we have select, and this is to select my objects and choices that I have here once I have a selection. For instance, if I make a selection here and I select this giraffe, uh, <laughs> giraffe, that's a zebra, Richard. That's a zebra. So now here, um, yeah, I think I should go to the zoo <laughs> and re-study uh, the animal's name. All right, Richard, going back to the point. So now here in select, I can modify that selection. Then you have filter here. Trust me, you're going to spend a lot of time going to the filter tab because there's a lot of things that you can do there to make your image more beautiful. Then you have 3D here for those who love and like to work in 3D. Then you have your view here, and this here is referring to how you want to view your document once you have it loaded here. This is your window here, and the window, for example, if there is an option or some tools that you cannot find, you don't see here, well, you go to window, for instance, and you say brushes, and look how it appear here, and now you have all the brushes right there. And finally, help. Well, if you don't know how to do something in Photoshop, what, what do you do? You call out for help. So you go there and what you do once you go there is search in the community for what you're looking for. All right, now that we have the option bar out of the way, the tool bar and the property toolbar, now we're going to move to the right side of the, the Photoshop. And here on this area right there, let me move this here. Um, uh, let's move it. Let's put it there. So here you have search, if you want to search for something. And then here you have your, this what you see here is your working space. You have different working space. You have essentials, as you can see, everything changes for essentials. You have then graphic and wet and 3D and so on, and you can also customize everything that is here. As you can see here, I, saw, I have some that are already customized, but for the moment we're working on the one uh, photography. And let's say you messed up one of those options here. For example, you move, you move this here, <laughs> you move that here, and you move that there, and I don't know, you, you now don't know where this was and what goes where, and you totally lost. Well, panic not, <laughs> because all you gotta do is come here and you set reset photography. And that will apply for any working space that you have. All right, so you can see everything went back to where it was. Now, you know, right here, this is your working space options. All right, and this little option here, this is for you to export your images or chair, which I don't recommend to do it that way later on in later um, episodes, we will learn why. So here, what is this here, Richard? Well, I will tell you what. In the left side, we have the toolbar. And then on top, we have what is called the property toolbar. Well, here it is the property of something called adjustment layers. And we're gonna see more of that in later chapters. But for the moment, like whatever, for, for instance, right here, this button here, which we will explain in, in depth in the next episode, like if I go here and I choose curve, that is an adjustment layer. And that adjustment layer has property as every tool in the toolbar. So now I can work directly here on this, um, um, adjustment layer, but also I have properties 
to work on and change and also information. So let's remove that because we don't want that for the moment. Oh, it didn't want to delete. All right, now it's gone. So now you know, and then here you have also your history of everything that you do. Very good. For instance, if you mess something and you want to go to a earlier stage, like here, when we open, we go and we can go back to a later stage. So here you have actions also. We will also talk about actions, how they work, what they do, but that is for more advanced videos later on. So now you have your histogram here, and this tells you your shadows levels, your highlight levels, and your mid-tone. Here you have navigator, which you can navigate your image and zoom and navigate here. For example, if I want to see this uh, zebra here, well, I move it a little bit lower here and I can navigate and basically work with this here. So it's a very nice feature. If you are lazy and don't know what to do in Photoshop, you can play with that. <laughs> All right, here then on the bottom, we have what is called the layer panel. And this is where you are going to spend 90% of your time in Photoshop. Because here on the layer panel, you can see we have library, we have adjustments uh, here, which is what I said, adjustment layers. And then here on this panel, on this side here, all this is layer panel. And you have layers, you have channels, you have path. Channels is every single individual um, color of one image in RGB that make the whole RGB uh, image. All right. So then here on the bottom, you have your visual effects panel or drop down menu. Then you have mask. If I click here, you can see that it, that right there is a layer mask. Now undo that. Here, this icon here, this is my all adjustment layers. This one here, if I click on it, then I will create a new layer. And then finally here is to delete something that I don't want, but there are shortcuts for that that will help you a lot. And finally, we're gonna go here to this side down here, down right there. Here we have document information. For instance, I have mine for document size, and this tell me the size of my image that I have there. And you can go for document profile, measurement scales, smart objects, layer count, and so on and so forth. You want to have this in document document size, um, mostly of all of the time, because this tell you like how much uh, size you are creating in your document. And that also give you an idea if Photoshop start lagging or SR misbehaving. All right, I think for the moment uh, on this video, that's all I have to share with you. Now you have a clear overview of what the Photoshop main interface from the moment that you open Photoshop all the way until you have your file inside. Now you know where are each panel and where are every toolbar. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you share this video with your friends, with your relative, anyone who wants to learn Photoshop but has no idea where to start. This is a great opportunity for you to share this video and let them know that in this series, if they stick with me, they will go all the way from beginner all the way to intermediate. And let me tell you what, like if you really love what you're doing, you can make a career out of Photoshop. I hope this video helped you a lot. I also will ask you that if you like this video and it was helpful for you, it will help me a lot if you drop down a comment in the comment section. And let me know that you visit my channel. Let me know that you watch my content. So my name once again is Richard Morla, your host here in Ruji Media. So I hope that you follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, and also here, subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And also if you did that bell that you have right there, if you click it, it will notify you whenever I load a video. All right, guys, thank you very much. This is your host, Richard Morla. See you 
until the next time on this series, all the way from beginner to intermediate in Adobe Photoshop. See ya! <laughs>